What is up, Waffle Gang? I do hope you are well. My name is Mark, and today we're covering some more r slash am I the butthole. If you'd like to skip the initial waffle, timestamps are in the description and along the timeline below. But if you are new here, please consider hitting that like, that subscribe, and maybe, just maybe, that notification bell to you spicy so-and-sos. And let's just crack straight on with today's stories. Much love, guys. Now, our first story comes from Syllabub Entire. Am I the asshole for telling my brother if his kids go hungry, that's his problem, not mine? Throw away, my English is a work in progress, so just a warning. I'll call my brother Mike and my ex, Tammy. 10 years ago, my then fiance left me at the altar. Most humiliating thing I've ever been through. And went on our honeymoon with Mike. In her note, she told me she loved him since high school, but he was never interested, so she used me to get to him. She claimed to have loved me at some point, but after drunken one night stand, her and Mike knew they were soulmates. I'm not gonna lie, I was a wreck for about a year. Every time I tried to move forward, that day, her mother tearfully handed me the note and everyone's faces would set me back. But time's a healer and I've moved on. I disowned Mike and haven't spoke to both of them in 10 years. For the first two years, my family hid that they had any contact with him, but then just basically sat me down one day and told me Tammy was pregnant and Mike was planning to marry her soon, so I needed to get over it because they were going to the wedding, baby shower, etc. To be honest, I was hurt at the way they went about it, but they are adults. I can't control what they do with their lives. I simply asked not to invite me to anything they would be at or expect me to forgive him, which they tried multiple times to make us talk. But after a year of no contact, they got the picture. Fast forward to last week, I heard Mike and Tammy are expecting their fifth child and Mike's business went bankrupt last September. Then the chain Tammy works at closed down and they have zero savings. Apparently, my family have hinted that my wife and I should help them because we are the most financially successful for the kids' sake. My wife told them straight up no and said to tell Mike to look for a job and we left. A while later, I got a call from an unknown number. I had a feeling who it was, but I just had to answer. From the moment I said hello, Mike and Tammy started ranting about me needing to get over Tammy saying I'm a piece of shit for punishing kids for something that happened years ago. And finally, my brother asked me, how does it feel to be the reason his kids go hungry? So I told him that's his problem, not mine. They started yelling and crying, so I just hung up. Since then, my whole family is calling me names for taking my anger out on Mike's innocent children. My wife said I should tell them to go fuck themselves and ask them to put their hands in their own pockets. Why is it in these stories that family always backs the shitty person? I fucking hate it when it happens. But it happens every time. I guess the post wouldn't be here otherwise. But there is different levels to shittiness in this post. I mean, the initial jilting him at the altar and then just leaving. But that was that was one level of shittiness. And don't get me wrong, that is a, a big level of shittiness. But then to turn around and say, oh, I just used, I used you to get to him. That's a whole nother level of shittiness. It just gets deeper and deeper. And no one's ever going to blame you for not wanting to help these people. Obviously, the kids are the innocent party in the situation and you do feel sorry for them. But they are not your responsibility. If the family cares so much, they will find a way around it to deal with it and not just turn to you. I can't believe that they have the balls to turn to you in the end. Wow, absolutely not the asshole. But Miss Murderpants says, I am really in love with your wife. I'm getting a tan from her blazing shiny spine. She is right. Plus, she is truly all the family you need. Mike and Tammy made their choices 10 years ago. The thing is, Tammy knew what she was doing and could have ended it way before the ceremony. Coupled with the fact that she had a one night stand where your bro gets his culpability. The gross cherry on top, they took your honeymoon. I'd have sued her for that. I hope you get the ring back or dues for the cost. Oh yeah, might be good to mention to your family that you already chipped in and state the above reasons if they never paid you back. Not the arsehole. And K.A. Castro says, not the arsehole, and it sounds like you definitely upgraded when marrying your wife. Good on you, OP. Tell the rest of the family to help Mike if they are so concerned. If you're really worried about the kids going hungry, maybe a call to CPS is in order. And Snoocake says, not the arsehole, I'm sorry that happened to you, but you dodged a huge bullet there. Your wife is a queen. Take her on a nice date. 
and got a life to live says, not the arsehole, they're complete idiots. If you're asking for someone to help you, you grovel at their feet, not tell them how shitty of a person they are. Secondly, how irresponsible of them to have a fifth child that they cannot support. Sorry about your family mess. I just continue not having them in your life like you have been. If your parents want to help, then that's their choice. You owe your brother nothing. And Monarcha Donut says, not the arsehole. Those kids aren't your responsibility any more than they are anybody else's. The rest of your family can ante up or shut up about it. Here's the thing. Even if your brother had never wronged you and his wife was not someone you'd been involved with, you would still not be obligated to help them out. Their family is their responsibility, not yours. Now, I turn this one to you guys. What do you guys think of this crazy situation? Let me know in the comments below. And our next story is from No Faithlessness. Am I the arsehole for not inviting my friend to something because she always brings her husband? Ever since my friend got engaged and later married, her husband comes with her everywhere. In the beginning, it didn't seem weird, but she'd mentioned something about a girl's night and when we'd show up, he'd be there. Friends would have birthday parties where none of our partners were invited and it was just the girls and she'd bring him. We tried to talk to her about it, but she says it's just how they are as a couple. They like to do things together. There have been a few occasions where he won't come, but that's because he's working. It got to the point where we tried to plan events around his work schedule. It's the same every week, but eventually that became impossible. We haven't gotten together much over the past year because of the pandemic, but recently our favorite bar reopened with patio seating. A bunch of us wanted to go, but the only night that worked for us was a time when friend's husband wasn't working. It meant he had come, so we chose not to include her on these plans and went out, having a great time. We could bitch about whatever, there wasn't someone awkwardly hanging over us. It was the girls' night we needed. One of the people in the group posted a picture on Instagram and our friend who wasn't invited saw it. She got upset that she wasn't invited and was asking why. We knew she was free, etc. No one wanted to own up to it and I said, because we wanted a girl's night, not a girl's night plus your husband. She got more hurt and accused us of not liking her husband. I said, that's not true, he's a cool guy, but sometimes we just want to be with us girls. Some of us are married and we don't drag our husbands to every event. She stopped responding to the group chat and hasn't spoken to me since. I'm now wondering if we are being mean and if I was too hard on her. Am I the arsehole? Now, I have been in a similar situation to this one as, as OP has, and it, it was with our local pub across the road from me. And there's about a group of four of us, and one of our friends got a girlfriend, and eventually he started bringing her every single time we'd meet up and go to the pub. And like OP, it was absolutely fine the first few times. It was absolutely great. We was chatting and getting to know her and all this kind of stuff. Brilliant, brilliant good times. But then we went back to our usual conversation, which we do in the pub. And it's just shit talking, basically. We talk about computer games. We talk about we talk about football. We talk about sports and just whatever's going on TV. Just rubbish talk, basically. And it just gets worse the more beers we have. <laughs> and over time, we started noticing that this particular girlfriend wasn't interested in our conversation and it was obvious and try turning the conversation other ways and it was it was okay at first and we didn't mind it but we like talking shit <laughs> and that was it really and it just started getting to the point where it, it wasn't enjoyable for us anymore um and it just made the whole situation awkward we could see she was awkward we felt awkward because of that and it created this whole awkward atmosphere we did try to approach it and mentioned it and when we did, friend got really upset and we basically haven't seen him since. So there is that. And we are gutted that happened, don't get me wrong, but at the same time, we're happy we're back to shit talking again when the pandemic ends. So I'm gonna tag on to this post as well and you can decide if I am the asshole or not because I'm still not sure whether I am the asshole or not in this situation. I certainly don't feel like one, but you know, people come at you with all different viewpoints and stuff like that and I certainly wasn't wanting her to feel awkward or or exclude her but in the end there was no chemistry between her and the friend group so it just felt you know pointless so we'll start off with aggravating fix saying not the arsehole she broke the girl code if it's a girl's night out don't bring a dude any dude hence girl's night why is that so difficult for her to understand you are totally within reason to let her know. Also, same goes for guys' nights. Don't bring your girlfriend. 
And what Jaff says, not the arsehole, if you wanted the girls' night, that should be respected. If he goes out with the boys, does she need to tag along? Is there more going on there where he doesn't let her go out alone? Maybe what you should do, arrange some spa day where it's going to be towels and saunas at ladies only facility. See what happens. And responsible maybe says not the arsehole at all. Your friend is a huge arsehole that doesn't respect their friends. Also, they're real weird. And Amethyst Fire says, not the arsehole, there are things that couples need to do without their spouses along too. Does he bring her to every one of his guys' nights out? This level of attachment isn't healthy. It makes me wonder about abuse. It should be normal and healthy for each half of the couple to do things without the other. There are also things they can do together, but not everything, all the time. Now, I turn this one to you guys. What do you think of this situation? Do you think we are the assholes or not? Let me know in the comments below. And our next story is from Dion and Cher. Am I the asshole for not wanting to go on a family vacation to Disney and ruining everyone else's plans? My husband and I live a happy, quiet life in the mountains. No kids, a few pets, lots of friends and adventures to go on. My in-laws are nice people. They got the vacation planning bug and have decided that the big family vacation this fall is going to be going to Disney. I said their plans sound great and I can't wait to see pictures. Mother-in-law said that we'd be joining them. It's a family vacation. Theme parks, especially overly crowded, hot, expensive ones with screaming and crying kids and a week with his family, hard pass. My idea of a fun vacation is camping for a week and hiking or backpacking quiet solitude in the trees. We said we aren't interested, but that we're happy they get to go. Mother-in-law argued that we have to go because it's a family vacation. I explained that from my perspective. That's a lot of time to spend with everyone. That's a lot of time to spend with the kids who will be overstimulated, overtired, cranky from travel, etc. And that it doesn't sound like leisure. It sounds like work. Mother-in-law looked shocked and hurt, and I said, I didn't realize you looked at your nieces and nephews that way. Husband said that we love them just in small doses, and that we honestly wouldn't enjoy being around everyone else for the whole time either, and that quite honestly, we're just not theme park people. Mother-in-law looked so disappointed and made a quick excuse to get off the call. We discussed it again after, and we are both in firm agreement. A few days later, his brother called and yelled at him for ruining everyone else's vacation. I guess because we aren't going. It'll cost more for everyone and the parents won't get a break because they can't take a day off and send the kids with the auntie and uncle for a few hours. Husband said, oh, so the whole reason you guys wanted us to come in the first place is so you had babysitters. Brother-in-law got super offended by that and made a comment that spending time with your nephews isn't babysitting and went off how we don't know how to be part of the family. We just go off on our own and do our own thing without caring how anyone else is doing. It's caused this big rift and part of me wonders if we're just supposed to suck it up and endure a week at some overpriced gaudy theme park just so everyone else in the family gets theirs. Am I the arsehole? And there's a couple of little updates which we'll cover straight away. So update, I just wanted to redirect some of the child hate going on in the comments. We don't dislike the kids in the family. We spend time with them. We see them every three or so months and visit over holidays. The kids are perfectly good kids, but spending more than a day or two with them and the rest of the family is a bit much. It has nothing to do with the kids being brats or anything like that. They are just kids. Update two, thanks for the perspectives all. We're definitely not going on this vacation or to Florida at all. No offense, Floridans, Flor Florid Floridians. No offense, Floridians. Was that English? Is that it? <laughs> and I'd rather not meet Florida man. We're going to make sure to let everyone know that if they want to see us more often, they're gonna to have to put in some effort to at least meet us halfway and come see us instead of always coming down to see them. And of course, let mother-in-law know that we're sorry for the way we put the rejection, but to reiterate, we're not interested in a big trip for a week long and we'll consider popping in a day or two if they do a vacation somewhere more our speed. Hell no, you're not the asshole in this situation, man. I mean, I've I've looked into like going with my nieces and nephews to Disney in the past, man, and it is expensive. And this is just the Paris one that's fucking expensive. So I can't imagine how much Florida. I didn't even look into that one. I was like, nah, 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 nah. And OP is absolutely right in this situation. I've seen it with my nieces and nephews. When you take them to places like theme parks or overcrowded places, they do get overstimulated. They get cranky very quickly and 
sometimes it can be like a miserable experience rather than going somewhere like where OP is suggesting camping trip out in the woods. And I bet kids would love that building dens and having fun exploring the forest and hiking I, I love that sort of stuff as well but i do love theme parks as well so i'm not hating on the whole theme park thing but i totally get where op is coming from if they don't enjoy theme parks why would you pay that amount of money to go there and brother-in-law saying that it's not babysitting because they're nieces and nephews of course they used to you as babysitters they want some free time to themselves let's not beat about the bush here the brother-in-law is bullshitting but felicia says not the arsehole a disney vacation is expensive beyond belief and it's not worth going if you don't like theme parks plus you can't plan a vacation and say that someone has to go that's ridiculous you can invite them to come along but it's rude and crazy to say that you have to go also they were 100 percent wanting you to go as a babysitter for a day that's ridiculous of them an embarrassed strain says, not the arsehole, brother-in-law was offended because he got called out on something that was true. They wanted you to subsidize part of the cost and babysit kids. I would be the one offended were I you. And Miley30 says, you didn't ruin a family vacation. You declined to go on a trip where you're expected to subsidize something you had zero interest in and babysit to boot. Not the arsehole, if the family wants everyone to go on a family trip, they need to start by involving everyone in the planning. That way, they can plan trips that hold at least some interest for everybody going. And Rage Parrot says, not the arsehole. First, it would seem that they would have received some discount with more adults, or were going to add additional costs, because you know you are a child free and have the money. Second, I agree that they only wanted you there as a cash cow and a babysitter. Third, I think it's maybe time for a little time out from that side of the family. Their priorities seem whack. Now I turn this one to you guys. What do you guys make of this situation? Would you go? <laughs> Let me know in the comments below. And our final story is from Available Dirt. Am I the arsehole for not allowing kids to speak a certain language in my class? So I, female 29, am a high school science teacher at a multinational school with a program that caters to students who are unable to speak English fluently. This program runs in the same school, but has mostly different teachers and no overlap in students. All the students in my classes have either never been in this program because English is their first language, or they have graduated from this program and able to speak English fluently. Now, there is a group of three students in my class who are Korean. They speak Korean as their first language, but also speak English fluently. Now, these kids are always making noise, always talking and laughing. Now, I ask them all the time what they are speaking about, but they always say it's about work when it's clearly not because they're laughing and their tone resembles a social discussion rather than a work discussion. This all irks me a fair bit for obvious reasons. They're clearly not doing work. They talk loudly and disrupt the class. They laugh loudly and everyone wonders what the joke is. On top of all this, I have more than a few students with social anxiety. And whenever these kids laugh, I can tell each of them think they're laughing at them. The worst part is that I can't exactly tell them they're not because I myself don't know. Recently, I asked these kids to no longer speak Korean in my class as I can't understand it and I can't tell if they're doing work. They're fluent in English, otherwise they wouldn't be in my class. So I say, please speak English so I can make sure they're on task. This all boiled over when a couple of kids were speaking Spanish in my class with their second language. I was a little irked by this, but they had been on task for the majority of the lesson and I could understand Spanish. So I let it slide for around three minutes, trusting them to go back to work and they did. Now the Korean kids saw this and complained to their parents who have since called me a racist and emailed the principal. They've since been bombarded my emails and my phone calls. Am I the arsehole? And we'll start straight away with Bitter Nerdette saying soft you're the arsehole. For your position in your classroom and your job safety, you need to rethink your rules. For equality, you should have the same rules for everyone, English only, or else you will be showing favoritism. You need to be fair to your kids. As you have a position of authority, you should be showing them the best way to behave. I understand you can speak Spanish, but that's not the point. You shouldn't be restricting one set of people for a second language and not the others. You just need one parent saying it's racism being brought into the classroom and your job will no longer be in the classroom. And Zaki says you're the arsehole, either let them speak any language or don't let them speak any but English. But don't just ban one language because you don't understand it. And SH Sven says, you're the arsehole, the language isn't the issue here. It's that the kids are being disruptive in class. Rather than ban them from speaking their first language, you should stop them from messing around and get them to focus on the lesson. 
And Miss Barney Fire says, you're the arsehole. You should have immediately shut down any other language than English. It makes sense that the kids will talk and joke in their native language. But like you said, not everyone knows what they are saying. And they may be worrying the kids are talking about them. Just because you understand Spanish doesn't mean all the other kids do. So that the same theory can be applied to those students as well. And Bored Again says, you're the arsehole, yeah, this has racist undertones. There's ways to get them to work without bringing up their language. If they were speaking English, what would you do? Tell them to work quieter? You can handle this differently. And Beat Salty says, you're the arsehole, either only English or no restrictions, and quotes, who have since called me a racist, and then says, they are speaking facts. It's not like those kids are going to cause a next world disaster, so let them talk. They're probably just talking about studying. And finally, Commercial Wallaby says, you're the arsehole, should be either only English on the basis that in your class, everyone should be able to understand everyone else when they speak or all foreign languages permitted. From the Korean student's point of view, why is it their problem you don't speak Korean but do speak Spanish? Now, I turn this one to you guys. What do you guys think of this situation? Who is the arsehole in this situation? Let me know in the comments below. Now, once again, guys, thank you for being here today. I hope you did enjoy today's stories. And if you did, you know what to do. Hit the like, that subscribe, and maybe, just maybe that notification bell too. And if you want to support the channel further, you absolutely can, but never any pressure to do so by clicking that join button down below for YouTube or the link in the description for Patreon and joining up there. Thank you so much for your love, time, and support. And I will see you in the next one. Take care, guys. Much love.